Yes, of course. Hello, I'm Heidi. I've been playing around in this virtual field for about a week or two now, and it's lovely to see you all. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Heidi. And Rashna? Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Rashna. I work as a data scientist, so this is pretty usual for me. But it's uh, amazing to finally meet all of you virtually here. Thank you so much. And Shona? Hey everybody, I'm Shona. This is just like a normal working day for me. I'm used to looking at screens for hours on end every day. So hopefully no glitches with Facebook. Thanks very much. Great. Okay, uh, so that's fine now. And I'm going to um, ask, I'm going to mute everybody. And then, um, so everybody now is muted. Um, and now Marriott, I'm going to hand over to Marriott, one of our co-conveners, and you'll unmute yourself, please. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the 2022 Annual General Meeting of Naomi Martin Fund. I'm Marriott Dallas, and that means I'm one of Mimi and Jack Martin's grandchildren, and the two others are here somewhere, Willie and Janet. And I'm a co-convener of Mimi Martin Fund. We are pleased to note that we are very international today. I've kind of forgotten actually exactly which countries we have, but we've certainly got, um, we certainly have Scotland and England, and. Portugal and Romania and Malawi is that it is that the right which is not bad is it for a wee for a wee Scottish charity so that's great um today in an the AGM we'll take care of our essential business uh, of the AGM and we'll also report to you on on some of the highlights of our year and some of the issues that, we, that we're facing in, in Malawi and Scotland then we'll hear from our two speakers Joanna from the staff of one of our partner schools and Isa Uni from, from Stirling. I'm now going to hand over to Angie, my co-convener, and next slide, please. So I'm I'm Angie Wynn, and I am the co-convener with Marriott. And I'm going to start us off on the on the business. And the first thing I'm going to do is read out a list of apologies from people who haven't been able to um, manage to be here today um, but wish us wish us well um, and the apologies are from Donald Maxwell, Lindsay Shepherd, James Champion, Brian Kerr, Peggy Shatwell, Andrea Adden, Marjorie Kilwin, Penny Turton, Jill McElwain, Nora Summers, Hazel Dawson, Maury Niles, Isabel Reed, Alison and Colin Cameron, Liz and Andrew Hall, Wendy and Ian McFarlane, Helen Kinlock, Winnie Wood and Agnes Forrester. So that's, um, that's our apologies. Now we move on to the minutes from last year's AGM and the matters arising. Um, can I ask if anyone in fact has any matters arising? Because I'm not aware of any. Oh, sorry, I will go back to the apologies because we've had another one come in. Richard Robinson. Thank you. Right, any matters arising from the minutes? Anyone, Moira? No? Well, okay. I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not seeing, uh, right, okay. okay, we just like have a little pause for a moment. Yes. So that I can double check, right, that's fine now, I've got the whole screen on, I just want to, I want to double check that I'm, yeah, that I can see everybody, which I can now. Okay. And hello and welcome, can we have a very special welcome to Mercy? Um, our oh, good. Speaker. Yeah. Lovely to see you, Mercy. Okay. And fine, I okay, thanks, Moira. Um, okay, so what we need to do um, is accept the the minutes from last year. Can I ask for a proposer? I will do that. Thank you, Willie. And we need a seconder as well. Happy to do that. Thank you, Alan. That's super. So, um, and what we do need now, Maura, is a, a show of hands to accept those minutes. So if you can see it. Uh, yeah, so that's a majority. They're, they're that's lovely. That's, thank you very much, everybody. 
Okay, so now we go on to our presentation of the annual review, tell you a little bit about what we've been doing over the past year. And um, to do that, I am going to pass back to Marriott, who will start us off. So if we can have the next slide, please. So the school year is underway in Malawi, and many of you will know it's quite a challenging time. There's the lasting effects of the pandemic and also the devaluation of the clutch of the currency, which is causing quite serious financial hardship. This has meant more work for our Mercy and a greater use of our Ready to Learn discretionary fund, which Mercy controls. Despite these challenges, though, only two of our girls did not return to school this term. And we're pleased to note that that is a far higher proportion of girls completing in, in the secondary school compared to the country as a whole. Um, and presumably this is because of the security that they know that their, their, their finances are secure, the fees are being paid, and they also have Mercy's support. Um, since we're mentioning our Mercy, um, we're announcing today that, that her job title has changed slightly and she's now going to be known as the Mimi Martin Fund Malawi Country Director. Let's get to the next slide, please. So although there have been great difficulties in Malawi, it's also been a very positive year for the Mimi Martin Fund. We've met mainly online, but that does mean that, that it's easier to have um, involvement from other places. And, and so we have had more involvement from Malawi and from other parts of the United Kingdom. Um, Remy Kamanga, I'm not sure if Remy's in the meeting yet, but Remy Kamanga is, is our first Malawian trustee on the board. And our trustee, Kate, who is in the meeting today, is based in Norwich, but working online means that the distances between um, these places is, is no problem. And I'm going to pass back to Angie now because we're going to talk about some of the improvements we have made to our governance. So next slide, please, and back to Angie. Thanks, Marriott. Yes, um, it's been a, a busy year. Um, partly because um, at the beginning of the year, we realized that our strategic plan was four years old, which meant we were in its final year, which was um, quite a, quite a, a thing. Uh, I, uh, being one of the people who was involved in um, working on the, the writing of that one in the first place, I could not believe that we were reaching our final year. Um, so we've spent quite a bit of time this year um, revising the strategic plan, which will start in 2023. Um, and we put together a small uh, subgroup, which included um, trustees Kate and Alan, as well as myself. And um, we use that group to reflect on what we have been doing over the past five years um, and what uh, and what we needed to do over the next five years um, and uh, <clears throat> we were also assisted in that by um, uh, Aiko Imamura a, a student from um, from Japan but uh, more of her um, below. Um, but the, the good news was that we have achieved um, most of what we, we set out to do. Um, sadly, the, uh, the Bright Futures project, which we had talked about, um, and establishing a beneficiaries association proved much more difficult. But um, however, in our new plan, we looked at the, uh, the idea of, of the Bright Futures project and we felt partly because of the whole um, uh, the policies of looking at localization, which is about ensuring as much as possible is done in Malawi by Malawians, that we should perhaps be looking at a different way of um, supporting the girls um, and not have not running a project ourselves, but to to start to work much more with um, with uh, organisations that actually are based in Malawi, and um, and we, we there is a, a 
an organization that, that, that does that kind of, of support. Um, so, and, and now that it, some of you may know that the Scottish government uh, in their new strategy for funding now has a funding stream which um, organizations actually based in Malawi and being run by Malawians can directly request funding. So I think our role will be to support that rather than support rather than set up our own um, our own projects. Um, but we will on our part ensure that we will have more role models to um, to visit schools and speak to the girls. And on this slide you will see um, a photo of Nerani Natara who um, we commissioned to take photos in the summer. And um, there will be more of her later, um, hopefully at the end of the, at the close of the meeting, um, there's a, hopefully a wee treat for you when you will see the photographs that she took. And, and you will see from those photos how excited the girls were to meet her and, and hear her story. So next slide, please. Right, to go back to Aiko, um, as you'll see that she, uh, she was a student doing a master's at University of East Anglia. And thanks to, um, to Kate, one of our uh, trustees, uh, who is an associate professor at University of East Anglia, um, she, was, um, uh, she helped us uh, set this up. And as you'll see, Aiko worked on our pupil database and social media but one of the important things regarding governance was that she looked over our data over the past five years and compared it to our strategic report. And so we have a, now a new outcomes report. Um, and the report is available uh, on request, but there is a summary on our website. And um, that, was, that was really very useful for us and, and for the, the male subgroup when looking at our new plan. And one, one or two of the things that she has, she came up um, with was that um, it, it's really good to know that a significantly higher number of Mamie Martin girls remained in school than the Malawian average. Um, it was very high difference, even after the pandemic. And you've heard from Marriott how, um, how only two girls did not return, which was much, much higher than anyone expected, which was so good. Uh, sorry, uh, much less than anyone expected. So that was really good. And, and, and interestingly, the girls, our girls, exceeded the average results in their final year exams. So that was nice to hear. Um, and I think all of this um, also tells us just how important the Ready to Learn Fund has been in enabling girls to concentrate on their schoolwork and not worry about other things. Um, so that would be good. So I am now going to pass you back to Marriott. And so can we have the next slide, please? So as I'm sure you'll be glad to hear, we are um, increasingly careful and responsible about our cyber security. And, um, oh, let me go back one slide, please. That's the cyber, that's the one, yeah. Um, <laughs> we are in, we're being very careful about this and we have a, a good story to tell. We, on this, um, on this graph uh, chart, um, Mary Martin, we're the blue block and you'll see in 2021 where we sat and in 2022, where we are now sitting. And this is our Microsoft Secure Score. So this is a very, very good news story for us. And we're pleased to see that, that, um, that that's, that's good evidence there. Um, so that's part of our being a responsible organization. Well, let's have a look at our next slide, please. So you remember last year, I did a wee thing about looking at all the numbers across, across the board, across the, the work in which we do in, in Malawi and just fiddled about the numbers. The numbers are not particularly significant here, they're just the same sort of numbers as before, but I think it's quite helpful just to take a step back and look at what the process of, of what it is that we do. So um, at this, the 
at the heart of what we do are the girls out in Malawi going to school. But um, how that happens is that we have a board of trustees here who, who worked on the governance for the organization. And, and very, very importantly, the work is supported by people represented here in our meeting, our donors and supporters. And um, we're very pleased that we have um, trustees based in the United Kingdom. And increasingly, we hope we'll have trustees based in Malawi. Remy Kamanga has joined the meeting, and I believe Patrick, who is, yes, uh, Patrick Jingul, who has just been elected as our second um, Malawian trustee, is here. So it might be good if we all just gave our both Remy and Patrick uh, a wee wave, because as part of our localization is to increase the diversity. It's not just us in the United Kingdom telling folk what to do. And crucial to all the work that we do, as you know, are our partners, and we're very grateful for, for our generous and helpful partners. And let's have a look at our next slide, please. There we are. Um, some of them are new friends, some of them are old friends, and we are very grateful to all of them. And some of you will be here at our meeting. So if you are anybody from the Synod of Livingstonia or the Diocese of Karonga or Jengatua, Community Day Secondary School or the Soko Fund or Lancashire West, then very good day to you and thank you very much for your support. And of course, other not official partners, but other friends at Banana Box Trust and so on, Dalgetty, friends of, I can't remember, Nkongolweni, Scotland Malawi <laughs> Partnership, Medic to Medic, Alloway Parish <laughs> Church. If you are here, welcome and thank you very much for your friendship and support. Good to see you. Now let's have our next slide, please. Thank you. So what we wanted to talk to you about today is, is how, in terms of how we are managing our work in Mimi Martin Fund, the admin role and the IT issues. You, you'll remember from last year probably that, that Moira um, is currently, as a trustee and, and volunteer, is taking care of the admin work in a, in a voluntary capacity. And this mostly in the largest part of the work probably would be managing our funding streams, which we'll show you in a second, um, from individual donors and organisations and so on. Um, there, there, there are, and, and for the moment, it is anticipated that that work will carry on in a voluntary capacity. However, we have realised that quite, quite seriously, we need to look at um, getting some more IT support. At the moment, over this past year, when we've needed help, for instance, with the the very specialist area of cyber security, we, we were able to get specialist help, but we think it would be very, very helpful during this coming year to have a, a few regular hours provided for us by somebody else with serious IT ability. So if you know anybody who has <laughs> time to spare and has some IT skills and would like to, to work with us on a voluntary capacity, that would be helpful. Or even if you know somebody who would be happy to take on that work, a small amount of hours per week, in a paid capacity, it would be very important to hear, to hear from them as well. So really think about your contacts or people you know and get in touch because um, it's an area that we would definitely, and obviously, if we get good help with that, then our work will be even more effective. So it's kind of a plea, a very heartfelt plea. And really, I'm kind of speaking on behalf of Moira. Moira at the moment carries a lot of this work for us and we all lean on her quite quite shamelessly actually um, but it'd be very important that, that we could get the, the IT work supported by somebody else so, so do please get in touch and um, you get in that sense of urgency from me I think you probably am it's quite an important point. Let's move on to our next um, slide please. Thank um, you Angie. thank you Marriott. <laughs> um, Yes, back to our, our funding streams and, our, and, and to, to echo what Marit's just said, this is just a, another piece of work that um, Moira is very much involved in keeping an eye on and uh, uh, to put it mildly, um, I think that's quite a, a big chunk of work as well. Um, uh, and we are so fortunate in being supported by both these the, the, it's a mixture of individuals and groups of people who have 
have provided um, and given us long-term commitments. Um, it's so important because it, it, it enables us to support more girls and it gives us the security we need to make the same long-term commitment to the girls. Because as, as most of you will know, um, we do make a commitment to support. If we start supporting a, a, a girl in Form 1, we are committed to supporting her right through her secondary education. So all of these um, streams are really important. Um, and. Uh, and, and you'll see also that um, there's a new fund, PAT fund, um, which is supporting now five girls who are deaf, um, added to the six, so that's 11 that we now have in, in Bangweni. And of course, secondary education in this school lasts for six years. So it, it is a big commitment. So thank you again for that. Um, we also do, as it happens, um, have two girls out of school um, at this at this school um, because of pregnancy. But again, um, you'll know that our policy is to support girls back into school, and we will definitely be offering that support when they're able to take it up again. And meantime, Mercy has been able to fill those places um, at the upper end of the school to help out girls who are struggling to stay on for the extra year. So that, that's very good. Um, I think we were going to uh, stop here briefly just to ask if anyone had any questions before we move to the next slide. Okay, okay. Well, in that case, can we move on to the next slide, please? Right, so this is um, one of our success stories, just one of them. Um, but, you know, we always, we always like to see what our girls are, have been able to do since leaving school. And um, as you'll see, uh, Maclina Kwenda graduated in 2020 in physical planning. And we supported her for, for uh, four years at Elengeni Secondary School. And she is now um, a site administration officer for a company um, which aims to increase affordable renewable energy supply in sub-Saharan Africa. So uh, as you, I'm sure you will agree, um, a, a job that is is very important at this time. Um, and it was so, so exciting for us to, to hear what, what she was doing now. And she, she sent us a quote um, in which she says, I thank God for Mimi Martin Fund because they have contributed to the peak of my professional journey. Mimi Martin Fund, gave me freedom to focus on my studies, which is what I needed to make an impact and advance in my career. So, and she's one of our, obviously one of our role models and a great inspiration to our, our girls. So that was so good. So next slide, please. Right, so that this, this is us looking ahead. We've just um, spent time looking at what we have done. And now 2023 will be our 30th anniversary. So, uh, so uh, a birthday coming up. So we are planning lots of celebrations, including um, another visit for, by, by Mercy. Um, again, it, it surprised us to realize it was 2018, the last time she was here. And the first time, in fact, um, so it would be we are really looking forward to, to, to seeing, seeing you again, Mercy. Um, and we look forward to implementing our new strategic plan and working even more closely with our colleagues in Malawi. And particularly, as we've already said, having um, more trustees in Malawi. So next slide, please. So this is just Mer trustees, Mercy and the girls we support. Thank you for your support over the last year. And we look forward to continuing this. Tonga Homini. 
And now, can we have the next slide, please? We have come to our treasurer's report. So I will hand over to you, Alan, to tell us how we've spent our money over the past year. Thank you. Uh, thank you, co-conveners. Maniri uh, um, Mossi from Mizuzu, as I said earlier, I'm actually in Mizuzu at the moment, uh, where it's, uh, as they say here, it's Kocha Chimeni, it's very hot. Uh, can I have the first slide, please? All right. Uh, I realise that uh, the numbers here uh, might be quite difficult to read, but uh, I needed to fit them all onto the page. Um, this is the income that we received during the year up to 31st July uh, 2022, and it's uh, in uh, the various funds. Three of the funds are new uh, this year, the Lancashire West, the Katie Fund and the Pats Fund. And you'll see at the bottom right hand corner that we brought in £101,798 during the year. Uh, without doing any research, I suspect that's the biggest amount of income we've ever had, apart from perhaps years when we got £50,000 from the Scottish Government. But without getting that sort of money, it must be uh, um, the biggest that we've ever had, which is uh, very satisfying. Can we move on one slide, please? This is the expenditure, again, allocated according to, uh, uh, to the different funds. Uh, the biggest numbers there are the grants and bursaries, uh, the staff costs uh, in Malawi, and the office running costs in Malawi. These are the three biggest ones, including the Thompson scholarships in with the, the grant funds. Uh, I've left in the zero for the UK staff costs because that's actually one of the reasons why we have uh, a good surplus this year. Uh, previously, uh, up until about halfway through last year, uh, we were paying a salary and we're not this year. And uh, as has already been said, Maud has taken on that role on a voluntary basis. And that frees up a sizable chunk of money which we can use for uh, charitable purposes. Can I have the next slide, please? <laughs> This slide here shows the surpluses and deficits uh, and the brought forward balances. Just to stress that for a charity, a deficit is not the same as a loss for a limited company. Um, if we look at the Alison Cameron Fund in particular, we receive £50,000 up front and have been spending that over three or four years. So there's a big surplus and then there's a deficit in each of the other years. So this year, the deficit of almost £12,000 just means that we have spent £12,000 of that money uh, for charitable purposes. Um, the PATS fund has no, uh, sorry, the, yes, the, the PATS fund has no expenditure. And the reason for that is the timing of the money that came in. And it came in after the school year had started last year. So we didn't try and put anybody through last year. And that, that has now started this year. And as we saw earlier, there are girls, deaf girls being educated from that fund. Uh, the income and expenditure account is our general fund, and there's a surplus of some £19,000 there. Uh, the transfer from the income and expenditure account to the Thompson Fund is a historic cor correction. Because the years have been out of sync, not, we, we have our year end to coincide with the Malawian uh, school year end and that hasn't happened for the last couple of years and some expenditure the timing has got out of sync so that's just a historic collection a uh, correction to that and there's nothing to be worried about there uh, so we have a very healthy uh, uh, amount carried forward uh, this year uh, which is very satisfying can I have the next slide please this is our balance sheet and there's three things I would like to highlight here one is the net cash is slightly over £100,000, and I will come back to that shortly. Uh, if you can recall back to last year, we had a large amount of amounts payable, uh, almost £20,000, and this was because the school year had got out of sync and we hadn't paid for, uh, for, for term three at this stage last year because the term hadn't, hadn't started and hadn't had the requests. That's all sorted itself out. And the small amounts that we have outstanding are uh, simply across things like the accountancy fee for doing the, the uh, independent examination. That cannot happen before the end of the year. So that's always there. Uh, so that's a couple of things. The other one is that uh, we now have a, a fund for trustees trips. Uh, uh, we, we used to send uh, trustees from the UK to go out to Malawi, and that may well start again in the future. 
Uh, there were no trips at all, of course, during the COVID era. Uh, and uh, in this last year, I've been doing the trips myself because I'm here anyway uh, for part of the time. So it's been a real pleasure to go with uh, Mercy to six of the schools and to see how uh, uh, how she actually performs in, in practice. And uh, it's a real pleasure to see the way the girls respect her. And it's not just cupboard love. It's not just because she comes with money. It's uh, There's a lot more that she comes with than that. Um, so we set up a fund for trustee trips uh, because in some instances it's use it or lose it. Uh, and uh, uh, money has been allocated towards those and we've not been spending it. So we've set up a separate fund um, for that. Uh, if we can have the next slide, please. This um, uh, shows, uh, you know, I said that we had £100,000 of net cash. That may seem like a lot of money for a small charity, but actually uh, £62,000 of that is uh, restricted funds. And we can only spend that uh, for future uh, um, uh, uh, for future uh, grants and so on uh, and bursaries. So that leaves uh, a much smaller amount, thirty seven thousand uh, unrestricted. We hold ten thousand pounds back for an orderly winding up of the charity. This is merely a prudent thing to do, which Oscar encourages us to do. We have absolutely no intention of you glad to hear of actually using that. We have no intention of winding the charity up over the next year or the next two years. But uh, uh, you set the money aside when you are having good years uh, so that when lean years come and we, and we may have to wind it up, the money is actually there uh, to, uh, to sort things out. So hopefully we'll never ever use that. Um, so that leaves us uh, 27,000. Uh, this year we spent 32,000 pounds on uh, uh, on on fees um, that weren't from restricted funds, and that so that means that we don't actually have a full year's um, uh, funds at, in in the bank at the start of the year. So uh, the hundred thousand very quickly comes down to a much more manageable amount. So just in case anybody was wondering, uh, do if we've got hundred thousand pounds in the bank, can I stop? Given my uh, donations, the answer to that is no, don't you dare, <laughs> because um, uh, we still need the money coming in, uh, because we, um, as it says, there's £80,000, uh, we would need to fund all the school fees uh, for the girls we actually have at the moment through to, to the finish. So we still need to raise another £50,000, £60,000 minimum over the next two years. Uh, next slide, please. So what I've done here is, uh, is analyze the, the country in which we spend the money. The big blue block there is Malawi and the small horrible yellow color, I'm not sure what you would call that, is in the UK. So we're spending more than 90% of our money in the UK. And that I think that's an achievement, but that's the way it, it should be for a charity our size. Um, Sorry, uh, the, I'm just going to interrupt, Alan. You said in the UK, Malawi. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the, the, we're spending in Malawi, sorry, uh, the big blue block <laughs> is Malawi, so we're spending 90% uh, plus in Malawi, sorry about that, and uh, less, uh, a, a tiny amount in the UK. Uh, next slide. Is the type of spend. The blue one here uh, is a direct charitable expenditure. Uh, so that's money spent in Malawi and uh, money spent on school fees and such like, and the, the, the small block there is administration. So something like 5% of the money that uh, we raise goes to administration and 95% uh, goes directly. And I don't think we can get that any lower. Um, there are things like insurance and accountancy fee and so on, and they're the big ones. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we can't do without that. So that's, that's there. But everything else uh, that we possibly can goes to direct expenditure. And I think that, again, I think that's an achievement and we're managing your money well. And I think the final slide, uh, uh, in summary, we've had a good year. We've started three new funds, which is really encouraging. We've built up the general fund. Some of the uh, the older established funds will stop uh, very soon. Uh, so we still need regular donations so that we can continue into the future. Uh, so yewo chimeni for listening to me. Thank you very much. I'm happy to take uh, questions, of course, either in the chat box or uh, direct. Are we seeing any? No, we just we just give it. Uh, yeah, we have a question from Willie. Uh, more of more of a a comment than a than a question. I was 
just glad that uh, that Alan uh, uh, emphasised the 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 vital importance of individual small donations on a regular basis, and that not to be uh, don't want people to be put off by the fact that there's a proliferation of all these big named mm. sub funds. Uh, that they, they're not a substitute for regular donation, nope. in my view. Thank yeah, I, I, I agree with that one hundred percent, Willie. Um, uh, the the funds are lovely to have, but they will be there for four years or six years, and then they will disappear. Um, uh, the the uh, Alison Cameron money is is a case in point. That will disappear uh, in this current year. There'll be nothing left. Uh, and the the core work is done is funded entirely from the small donations and from the the fundraising, cycling, and different things like that. That's where our uh, the bulk of our money comes from, and the long term viability of the charity comes exactly from those uh, sums. Yes. Um, and we have a question from Frank, which is any way to protect the cash balance from inflation. Uh, the, yeah, um, that has now become uh, an issue, of course. Uh, uh, um, previously, we hadn't done anything about it but you, because you were getting 0.01% maximum. Um, and, uh, you know, it really wasn't worth the effort uh, in, uh, in getting that. We, we got £7 or something in interest from keeping £100,000 in the bank. Uh, it's now becoming the stage that uh, over the last couple of months that uh, interest rates are rising and we will look again at uh, some place uh, where we can put money that will earn, earn some interest. It will not protect us from inflation because we will not get a 10% return. Um, uh, the only thing that can protect us from inflation is for inflation to come down again. Um, but we will look at that and maximise the income that we can get from that. Any more questions? Question. We have a question from Heidi. Yeah, um, Alan, there was just a question from Patrick. I don't know if Patrick has um, audio. I've put it in, in the chat for you. Patrick was asking, why is it that there's no Malawian bank account? Uh, I think Mercy does. I think Mercy keeps, uh, uh, when we transfer, uh, part of the thing is that we transfer money directly to the partner organisations. Um, so we partner, we transfer money uh, directly to CCAP and to the diocese. So that uh, it comes into our bank account and, it, and it's paid straight to there. Uh, we transfer money to Mercy uh, for uh, wages and such like, and, and she will uh, protect that in an appropriate manner uh, within Malawi. Uh, the, the reason we don't have a Malawi bank account is we're a UK charity and the money comes into the UK and we transfer it largely, most of the vast majority to, uh, uh, if we had, if we transferred our money into Malawi for the future, we would actually lose out because of the exchange rate differences and such like over time. And Patrick says, thanks for the response, which makes sense to him. Uh, good, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. You can see that you, you scraped past Alan, well done. Yes. <laughs> so thank you very much to Alan for a nice clear explanation of where we are and uh, our grateful thanks, of course, for the very important work that you're doing for us. And let's move on to our next slide, please. And now we're going to hear from Mercy. I'm not sure whether it's, I should be saying that or whether it should be Andrew that's saying that. Because, I, But anyway. It's, it's you. It's you. Okay. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm happy to go on. So lovely to see you. And I just remind you that Mercy is now the Mimi Martin Fund Country Director in Malawi. So over to you, Mercy. And play video now, please. Hello, my name is Mercy Suande, the Mami Martin Fund Manager in Malawi. Mummy Martin Fund is a fund that is helping a lot of girls in Malawi education. Without their help with fees payment, most of the girls that we pay fees for would not have been at school. The girls appreciate the help gladly, and we are all very grateful and happy that the help came through. I want to say thank you to all the donors on behalf of all the girls out there who are supported by Mami Martin Fund. Thank you for the Alison Fund. Thank you for the Patty's Fund that has just come through. Thank you for Katie's Fund. Thank you for the LW Lancashire Waste Fund. 
the help goes a long way a very long way i cannot start explaining one by one how the help the help is being used but hear from us you have done a great work the money that you sent to malawi for the poor girls is a huge thing that you have done without that these girls i can assure you they would not have been at those boarding schools having their education there so especially also i want to say thank you for the late day to learn fund that goes in to help the girls to bring the girls to school but also to bring them back home when the school have closed the Little Train Fund has come in and it is helping a lot with the needs that they, the basic needs that the girls are having. You know, most of the parents, most of their guardians, financially they are not stable, they are not okay that they can provide things for their girls to go to school. So the Little Train Fund come in to help this girl child to have a better life at school, at least to have the soap that she needs to wash her clothes. Thank you for the sanitary wear that is provided through the Lady to Learn Fund. The girls are very grateful. If we had time to get one or two of them to express their gratitude, we would have seen it, that they really appreciate the help that is coming through to them. Thank you for everything. And may God bless you. And may you continue for all, everyone who is taking part. I may not mention one by one, but for everyone that is taking part, in the fundraising, in the managing of the Mummy Martin Fund, in the all those donors out there, the little that they are giving out, everyone who's taking part, we say thank you with a grateful heart. The girls send me to say thank you to you all. May you continue the good work and let's work together, let's hold hands to see that this poor Malawian girl has her secondary education from Form 1 up to Form 4. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mercy. Now, next slide, please, because we have a second um, a presentation from Mercy on a specific issue. So play this video, please. My name is Mrs. Swande, my Martin Fund Manager in Malawi. I just wanted to give a brief explanation on some of the girls that has, for a certain period, dropped out of schools. We have three girls. One girl, yeah, she was, she dropped out last year because she was pregnant, but we heard news that she has delivered a baby girl and she might be coming back to school the 2022 second term to continue with her education and we are hoping that next term we will have her at school and then we have two more girls who, who, who have also dropped because they are pregnant I personally have talked with the head teacher to get the phone numbers of the parents and guardians to talk to them and assure them that if the girl, this girl, these girls when they, are, they have delivered their babies they should be allowed to go back to school as mommy Martin fund we are ready to support them back to school so that they continue their education and they finish their secondary school. We will keep updating each other and we will keep communicating with the parents and guardians just to encourage them that they shouldn't allow these girls to sit down and stop schooling. But after they have delivered, they should go back to school. That was the update that I wanted to give on the girls that have currently stopped, maybe it will just be for a year, then they will be back at school. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, we may very well have some questions for Mercy, so can somebody help me out and see if there are questions from the floor? Mercy, can I ask, can I say that, of course, because you understand I manage Mercy and I manage the school's uh, requisition list for their students, so there's a lovely story we don't want to mention any names, of course, but there's a lovely story at the day school about a girl who has come back after she's has had her baby and she's she's starting. She's going to repeat uh, form three and she is currently in school, which is a huge um, that's a huge congratulations to Mercy and the school the school. It's a fabulous school in terms of how it supports its pupils. Um, and maybe Mercy could with us say without saying the girl's name, maybe Mercy could tell us that story. You know, the girl, I mean, Mercy. 
the one whose name I can't pronounce. So without mentioning names, I will remember that. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great success story that we are having for a girl that was pregnant last year. And she, fortunately enough, she came back to school and requested that the school mm -hmm. keep a press for her. So the press was kept and then she went back home. While there, when she was six months pregnant, I just learned this three days ago when I met the girl, when we went for visiting with Aaron. So I, I went back in the afternoon to meet the girls and then she narrated the story to say when she was six months pregnant, she had a car accident whereby she, the car crashed in her when she was walking along our road. Some of you who have been to Malawi, we might understand there are a lot of bicycles and cars within the location loads. So she was there and the car crashed in her while she was six months pregnant and she stayed in the hospital, intensive care for the whole month, two weeks unconscious. Then she gained her consciousness and we thank God that she 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 continued she, she kept her pregnancy the pregnant the pregnancy was not lost and she stayed in the hospital for a month sorry the the, the kids are making noise can you go out? <laughs> don't worry mercy <laughs> don't worry <laughs> so she she delivered a baby girl and this time you know the new academic year started on 10th october 2022 and she joined back at school repeating from three, of course, it's understandable after a year out of school. So she's there in form three. And I was very happy to welcome her back. And I talked and canceled her to say, continue with your education. You only have two years to go. And after these two years, you might end up having your dream come true. She really <laughs> wants to, to, to get the school and be a nurse. So I encourage her to that she will live up to her dream. And if possible, our partners who takes on in the university sector should really help out with this girl if she passes well and goes to the university so that her dream comes true of being a nurse. Yeah, that's the story that I wanted to share. And I know the other girls, as we talk to them and encourage them, the ones that have currently dropped out of school, they will come back. They will surely come back after the deliverance. They, after them having their babies, they will come back and finish their education. Thank you so much. And thank you for the school for accepting our girl back. Mm. That was mm. yeah. yeah. Thank you, Mercy. That was really interesting and, and such good news. Really pleased about that. Um, so are there any other questions for Mercy? Thank you very much. Uh, and now we're going to move on to hear about the work of the marketing group. So we're passing to Moira and asking for the next slide, please. Lovely. OK, well, thank you, everybody. It's my great pleasure to uh, report on the marketing um, on the marketing of this year. I do like that, you know. So Pledge 100, <laughs> Pledge 100 was completed with, which was a big success. I'll show you a graph shortly. Borders 22 was our big thing this year. And we had immense fun. And there are a number of people here who were involved in Borders 22. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, the kilt walks, many a sore foot was had uh, in both Glasgow and Edinburgh and many a pound was raised. So that was great. We will give show you a fabby photograph from the London Marathon. Uh, Frank, who is here, opens his garden in Humby Dean for us every year and makes a substantial amount of money, about a thousand pounds this past year. We do gift cards, our website, social media, we're onto it. Next slide, please. So just wanted to show you that this is what, uh, what the fundraising activities achieved. So with Borders 22, I always set up my, my projects, my fundraising projects, not just as a fundraiser, they're about engaging people and yeah, involving people and spreading the word about the Mimi Martin Fund. And that's where I measure the outcome. And, and it does, all of them do meet that. But it's nice when there is a few thousand pounds as well. That goes a very long way in Malawi. Um, so it's with great pleasure that I see this slide in terms of our borders. The borders was, um, it was, well, we'll just move on to the next slide, please, because I'm going to come back to the money thing. Um, so the borders started because Alistair Allen, MSP for the Western Isles, uh, wrote a book about walking the Scottish border, the wrong direction, the silly man. But um, 
<laughs> and he he donated their royalties to charity, um, two charities, one of whom is the Mimi Martin Fund. Well, there's an excuse for a project right there, right there. So um, so people walked, cycled, scooted borders or boundaries of their choice. Um, I have to now pay, pay special tribute to uh, Richard Robinson, um, who helped me, who worked out how we were going to make these maps. And we had such fun, fun is perhaps actually over egging it. We had a lot, we spent a lot of productive time making maps because Jean was the first one and Jean is here. And yeah, Jean's laughing, I know, because Jean did, she walked around um, the Black Isle where she lives, which is of course neither black nor an island, but let that go. And <laughs> in different segments, and we we had to learn how to put those segments together and make it look like one map. That might sound like a little nerdy, um, however. So uh, thanks to Richard for that. So this is the north of Scotland, Ishbel did up and down the Hebridean Way in spite of ferries crashing into piers and all sorts of things going on. And Sue, who's also here, cycled around the Tyree. Um, Jean did the Black Isle and Elizabeth did the other stuff. And Stuart Brown, who's not here, did the Murray Trail. Next slide, please. And then um, Elizabeth Shiak, who, although she does have an e-bike, she cycled around uh, Dumfries. No, she cycled around Galloway. Galloway. Get a grip, Murray. Galloway. In the windiest week of the year. Now we also cycled, um, somebody else and I, we cycled the Scottish border, but we were cycling from west to east and the wind, an average of 20 miles an hour was blowing from the west. So we were fine. <laughs> Not so with Elizabeth, it was much harder. And when when Brian Kerr, who was a trustee stepping down this year, did that, um, did that bit, he started the border and he started from Port Patrick or somewhere over there. And, and the weather was foul. There was kind of sleet and snow and such things, you know. Then over you see Berwick on Tweed. What fun we had in Berwick on Tweed. A number of the people are here. Ishbel is here, Sue, Heidi, um, that we cycled around. And Alan, Alistair Allen came. He did a presentation about his book at the library. We were there in our t-shirts and shorts because we'd just gone off our bikes. Um, and it was great. You know, it, it just, it was a feel good, you know, let a lot of people know about the Mimi Martin Fund and its work. A bit of stuff went on in East Lothian where Daphne attempted to tricycle a star mm, with mixed results. Um, we did the least Edinburgh boundary, if anybody wants to know about that. I'm now the one of the walking experts about that. And Sue did the north of Arran. And the next slide, please. Further south, we're moving south. So over on the left is Office Dyke. Um, now, Office Dyke, you couldn't you know, it's it's a, a mountainy kind of um, trail. But uh, Carol Cuthbertson, who's here uh, at the meeting, um, her husband is a nephew of Mamie Martin. And Carol won't mind me saying that she's in her 80s. And she virtually walked off his dyke from her home in Hertfordshire, so like a little bit further south and east. Um, and she, in the middle of, or well, she was three quarters of the way there, she had quite a bad fall. But she, she just picked herself up and dusted herself down and then continued in little spurts of one and two miles until she achieved that. So that was just a wonderful thing to do. Further south, it's harder to see on the slide here. We have um, a London, Andrea and Ashley did the, the Greenwich Meridian um, and James Champion did some stuff across three county borders like Buckinghamshire and blah, 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 blah. Um, it's a, my geography of that bit of England is very bad, but it's improving. It's improving. James was a great help with a lot of the things we did on this project as well. Next slide, please. Then we move to the continent. Um, Sally McPherson virtually walked the Berlin Wall and again blogged. Can I say that Carol also blogged? Um, so maybe we can just have a little round of applause for Carol. <laughs> Not only <laughs> virtually walking off his way, but <laughs> blogging as well. Um, and Sally blogged her way around the, um, the Berlin Wall. And then Fran Coates, who hasn't yet joined us, but might well join us before the end of the meeting. She started off from San Malo in France and she cycled across seven country borders during Borders 22 to Albania. Um, and that was 4,000 kilometers. And then, or just when we three and a half, and she, she had a little rest in Albania and she then continued on to the Black Sea and she made it to the Black Sea last week. Um, and she's now cycling up through Romania and up to the Danube and back 
home along the Eurovelo 6. Extraordinary. Back, mm -hmm. Bike packing, might I say, carrying her tent and everything. And like she's our age, well, my age. Um, so it's, you know, Fran, and she blogs, of course. So blogging is the new MMF thing, let me tell you, everybody. Next slide, please, before I kind of... Um, Right, I'm just checking that I haven't forgotten. Any. Then Jenny, so you've heard about the Thompson Fund from, from Alan. Um, the Thompson Fund was set up in memory of Jack and Phyllis Thompson, um, supports deaf girls at Mbengwini School for Deaf Children. And Jenny is the daughter of um, Jack and Phyllis, who are now both deceased. The fund was set up in their memory. And she ran the London Marathon and she raised over £4,000 for the Thompson Fund. Um, her father, Jack, was also a marathon runner. And we have a lovely uh, picture of him um, in a similar kind of pose to her now in her, in her MMF t-shirt. So well done to Jenny. Next slide, please. Um, now we have a little video for you. So hopefully what I've said kind of puts in context some of the stuff in the video. So if you play the video, Rashna, please. Thank you very much indeed, Rashna. Can I have the next slide? Um, so huge thanks to our volunteers and all of the people who make all these things happen, uh, which is absolutely great. So we have a new team, a birthday 30 team, because um, as was said earlier, next year is our 30th year. And we're inviting you all to engage with birthday 30 and think about 30 things you can do or share news of MMF 30 times or tell 30 new people about the Mamie Martin Fund or whatever. And we're looking for photographs of those. And we've already arranged a Malawian photographer, um, um, Tamani Chitambo, who will uh, choose uh, one or more of the, the photos for a little prize, which we're busy gathering. So, and there'll be other, other birthday celebrations too. Um, so then next slide, please. Um, so I just want to make the point about the individual donations that's been made a couple of times already, is that while we think the fundraising is great and aren't we all excited, well, I'm die all excited and everything, um, actually it's it's not, you know, you can see that it's 37% as opposed to 63%, which comes from regular donations. Now that's regular, not kind of one-off or occasional, because we do occasionally get, you know, donations here or there, but these regular donations, they are the backbone of our funding absolutely the backbone of our funding. So um, just to be very clear that um, the place of those, the relative place. So if we can have the next slide page, which is I'm inviting any questions. And while I'm doing that, to let you know that we've just, we launched today, consider it launched a uh, Christmas jumper appeal. Um, I'll pop the link to that in the chat. And this, the, what's important about this is that it's through the just, it's through the Giving Tuesday people um, and it means that all donations made to that link and um, to the, that appeal come to us free of any charges from just giving or anybody else. Uh, and that just is from now until the end of December. And it's it, it, it's a it's to raise funds for the learning to learning the ready to learn fund, which Mercy has said how important that is. Now you'd be glad to hear I'll shut up. But I want to thank everybody. It's just been a lovely year fundraising wise. No, thank you, Moira. And I think it just shows everyone um, you know, how important um, fundraising is, but also what fun it is. Um, so thank you for, for, for that. Um, it was really, really good to watch, great fun to watch. So I am, I'm afraid, going to bring you all back to, um, to what some people say are perhaps slightly less exciting, shall we say. So we have to look at um, 
a proposal to amend the constitution, which um, we will show you. There's a, just a, a small change in the, uh, the wording, which we will be asking you to vote for. So can we have the next slide, please? And this is this is what it's about. Um, as you as you all know, um, Mamie Martin Fund started off uh, with a partnership with the Synod of Livingstonia, um, CCAP. But since then, and certainly over the last few years, we have extended that to other partners. And in 2020, we uh, needed to reword the the constitution. Um, to take account uh, and reflect what we were now, with what we are now doing. So this is just a change in in wording, which we now have to have confirmed by yourselves um, for Oscar. Um, so as you can see, it's just a uh, a quick. Um, North Malawi in schools, other educational institutions operated by among others. So that's one addition. Um, and the the other one is the Synod and any other organizations or schools which Mamie Martin Fund supports. So um, what I need to do is to um, ask you to vote launch pool please for this thank you marriott and i'll just i'll just confirm if i can that i know those of you who have voted have already voted about this but we need this to be ratified by this meeting yes uh, that oscar will change our purposes as it's called on their website thank you moira so that's that's approved by by you all thank you so much for doing that and that means we can go on to the next slide, please. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Election of trustees and appointment of independent examiner. Um, you will know that this has already taken place beforehand through Google Forms um, and or paper forms. Um, so. Uh, it is just for me to feedback the results of, of those. Um, the current trustees were overwhelmingly voted back. So thank you all for that. Um, a new trustee in Malawi, who uh, Marriott has already mentioned, Patrick Shingo, was unanimous, unanimously <laughs> voted on too. Um, so can I... Uh, formally welcome Patrick to the board uh, and we also have um, had the vote for our independent examiner. Um, we in fact uh, the the last um, auditor resigned during the year and we were very fortunate to find Paul um, who uh, who joined us in the middle of, of last year and audited the today's um, accounts. Uh, and so we are here now, we, we just needed to reappoint him officially uh, and that was unanimously supported as well. So that's, that is all fine. Can we have the next slide please? So we have come to the last one or two bits of the um, the business side of the meeting. We have, we have Are a, there any other competent businesses? Yeah, business? The, the, Willie has a hand raised. Oh, okay, Willie. Um, just uh, I would like to personally thank um, Brian Kerr for his many years of service as a trustee and um, a, for, especially for his, his wisdom, his insight and his uh, calmness in the face of adversity. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Willie. Well said. Is there any other competent business? No. Well, in that case, I will. Oh, I see quite a lot of things in the chat box. Is there anything that I need to bring up? Uh, no, we're just we're just patting each other on the back, really. Well, then. right. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, we're welcome. Okay. We're welcome. Well, Patrick, we're welcoming Patrick at particular. Yes. Um, yes. He's thanking us for that. And Willie, ah, yeah. 
reminding us that Oscar is the the office of the Scottish Charities Regulator. Oh, thank you, Willie. I should have I should have um, interpreted that, shouldn't I? Um, okay, so. I can there now formally conclude the business part of the meeting and I'm going to hand you over to Mario to introduce our speakers and I'm sure you'll be very interested in hearing from these. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next. Next okay, slide, next slide. So here's Mrs. Joanna Chimpepo, who teaches at the Community Day School in Mizuzu, and we're going to hear a video from her. So can we play the video, please? <laughs> 